I'm Becky Lover. I am an associate professor in the ASTE department and on, I'm on the ETE faculty committee. So I get the pleasure this afternoon to introduce Peter Runga. Peter comes from Poland and received his master's degree in mathematical sciences. And I'm going to try this from Adam um, Miskovich. Is that close? Try him to. I don't speak Polish, obviously. Um, university and came to Logan in 2001 to pursue a doctorate degree at USU. He graduated in 2009, but in 2008 moved out to Tooele, where he was offered a lecturer position at the regional campus and has been working there ever since. Um, Peter enjoys the regional campus setup and admires his non-traditional students for their dedication and desire to learn despite different unfavorable circumstances. He likes to try new things and, and experiment with technology and innovative methods of teaching as long as they improve learning and the experience of the students. So, I am going to turn it over and I'm gonna take this one for you so I can help you. Okay, so uh, I received an innovation grant last year uh, before the summer started uh, to use tablets in classroom. Uh, the idea was that in a math class, uh, in a face-to-face -face math class, you have the whiteboard. So you can ask the students to come to the whiteboard, show their work in there, so you see them handwriting, you see what steps they show, how they organize their work and everything. You can even have several students at the board at the same time showing their work. There can be some communication between the ones standing by the board and the ones uh, that are sitting uh, to help solve problems and stuff like that, to discuss things, to have immediate feedback. Uh, and we don't have that in IVC classrooms. When uh, I'm trying to engage my students, uh, I have problems, especially with those that are single in their own classrooms. And uh, recently, like last semester, uh, I had one class in which I had 13 different sites connected. So most of the students were single in their own site, uh, and uh, it was very hard to organize any group work. But as I say, group work was just one of the reasons I wanted to incorporate that uh, technology. And uh, the most important reason was to give a student, give the students an option to uh, show their work in class uh, because I didn't want the formal written assessment like a midterm to be the first time ever I see their actual work because I was already supposed to evaluate it appropriately and give them feedback and give them points for it. So I wanted to be sure that they already knew what I was expecting. And you know, just showing them my work in class, which is also achieved through technology, not using these tablets, but using my Surface tablet and the software called PDF Annotator. So if you ever want to use uh, technology to help you create classroom notes in class and show it to students, that's definitely something I would recommend. But uh, that would be a one-man show. And I don't want my class to be a one-man show, even though I want it to be an actor that doesn't work well in learning environment. So I want my students to participate in class as much as they can. But as I say, there is this challenge of not, for them not being able to show their written work so that I can see it easily, so that others can see it easily that are not in the classroom with those students. And that's exactly why I started looking into those tablets, into their use, and everything about it. So uh, Alyssa Taylor, uh, one of our instructional designers that was assigned to Tuella, uh, dug a lot online with me searching for the best uh, application that is uh, fairly free to use uh, and mm, that is usable uh, with respect to what I was looking for. And we found what is called a real-time board. From what I know, I'm not perfectly sure, but I think it's a Russian product, actually. Uh, and uh, what it is simply is an endless, in a sense, whiteboard that we can use and extend in every direction. That's just the starting point. Uh, to show you more, I brought those tablets with me today, and I'm just trying to log in all of them. Uh, I was able to get through three of them so far, so I'll just give them to some of you. If you can sit in groups, maybe, I will be a little bit easier. 
here. The problem with these is that uh, you can't really use your own device unless you have some kind of stylus because it's important so that it uh, writes nicely on it. It's set up for students, so it's very easy to log in. Actually, the students create a free educational account on that real-time board website. Uh, to ask all of you to do it right now would be ridiculous, so I, I'm just logging all of you to my account, so we'll be using the same board, because the, the biggest advantage of that uh, application is that it's a shared board, so everybody can contribute in real time, and we can all see what everybody is doing. And I will log in in that computer as well, so if you can turn on the presentation from that main computer there. Uh, so I will be showing you what everybody's working on right there. Let me just give you one more. Yeah, I think that, that will be enough. We have one there, we have one there, we have one here, and we'll have one there. That should, that should be enough. Well, I'm happy that uh, the room is not full. <laughs> uh, just a second. Yeah, and I, just uh, to give you some history of, of me using those tablets, last year I got them in the summer, right before the summer started. So I tried to pilot them in the summer, uh, but I only taught a seven-week class at the first uh, session, and unfortunately we came up with some serious bag that was very frustrating for students because when they used uh, the stylus, uh, they have built-in styluses, by the way, on the side there on top, upper left, uh, not right, the other left, upper right corner, they have styluses that you can take out and use. Uh, so uh, every time they would take the stylus out of the screen by about up to half an inch, it would still treat it as an input. So what they were trying to move the stylus over the tablet, and w when you're writing, you do it all the time, it would take all of that as input. So it was just huge scribbling and nothing visible. So finally they got rid of it by the start of the fall semester, so I was able to use those a little bit better in the fall semester. Okay, it's in. <laughs> Almost in. And uh, it takes some time. Well, first of all, the logistics uh, is a little hard because I need to wait till the rosters are stabilized in the class because I need to know, first of all, how many uh, sites I have connected in the given class and how many students uh, I have in each classroom. Uh, I have only nine operating tablets. Unfortunately, among the ten that I bought, one was broken immediately, so we replaced it, and it turned out that after a few days, it, in a sense, broke again, and we decided not to go along with it any further. Uh, can we be on? So I usually have them started on those tablets about uh, one-third of the semester, when I already know where to send them. Uh, I'm usually teaching four classes per semester, and because I only have eight tablets, I have to send them to just one class, so it's always the question which class to use it for. But um, once it's sent, then it takes students uh, usually a day or two to get used to the software and everything. They are confident in using it, because from the point when I start using them in class, they really write the classroom notes because I ask them to solve problems. Of course, I do some by myself first to introduce the concept, but then they do their own work, and that work is later included in the classroom notes that I always post online. So they are co-creators of the classroom notes. And that's just the starting point in all of that. I just want to show you quickly how easy it is to set it all up and then you will start working on that on your own to see uh, how it's working. Uh, the way I gave it to you was in a dashboard, and there are several whiteboards that my students have been using uh, from the very beginning, really, of, of, um, of this uh, adventure, I can say. And uh, if you click on any of those, they are completely editable, so... Uh, you can do whatever you want in there, really, and everybody will see that.
that's really the point. Can I sit at your computer? Yes, it's not mine, but you can sit by it. <laughs> Edit. And uh, what I'm usually doing is once the students have their own accounts, uh, each class period I simply create a new whiteboard that we collaborate on and invite them, oh, awesome, and invite them uh, to participate in it. So uh, once they are invited through their emails, uh, once they open their own dashboard, that board immediately appears. So it's very easy for them to navigate to it. The tablets are also prepared in the way that they just click on one or two things on the screen at the beginning of class, and they're already in it. So it's very easy for them to get into it. So even not technology savvy students can usually get into it very quickly. And then it's just a matter of learning how to use it a little bit because uh, we have to remember that it is connected to the internet so that everybody's input from all over the world really, it doesn't have to be only all over Utah, uh, are participating in that in real time. So whatever, whoever is writing will appear immediately on everybody's screen. So that sometimes is a little laggy in a sense. And uh, because of that, they have to learn to write a little slower. And that's really all it takes. Write a little slower. Don't try to be too fast, even if you use the uh, stylus. I don't want to go through the whole, you know, choosing the appropriate tablet thing that was a part of the grant uh, proposal and everything like that. I really wanted to focus on usability here. But for that, we need that screen. <laughs> yes? Did you say you had one tablet per site? Uh, the original idea was to have uh, a tablet at each site where we have students in a given class so that nobody's left behind, in a sense. No, it's only the browser that I need on the screen. And uh, I had to choose a class in which I didn't have too many sites. And then if I had enough, you know, if it was only one student per site, it was just sent there. Uh, but the idea was that groups of four or less will be convenient enough. So, like, we have it right here. Okay, it's showing. Awesome. Thank you. Can I so get the mouse back? You won't be able to see it. It's a separate screen. Okay. Can we do a copy instead of extend? I will give that a shot. Yeah, please. Because <laughs> it might be a little hard to see <laughs> from here. So that was the whole idea, really, of uh, buying those tablets through the grant so that all the students have it. They don't have to bring their own devices. And I'm not saying they can't bring their own devices because it's still possible, but I wanted to make sure that all the students have the same ability to use those tablets in class. Let's try. No, it's not visible in there anymore. Can go just through there and do a duplicate. That works. Okay, awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new board. I just want a blank thing. I don't want to create a template. I'll just call it ETE. And then it should appear already on your screen in the dashboard under my boards. Can you see that? So just click on it and you'll be already in it. Now we have four tablets out, so I will just call our first group here group number one. That one there will be group number two, group number three in the back, and group number four here. 
so I can show you the setup of it in class simply what I do. I, I create frames. It's very easy. I create the first frame. I just specify the area in which it's supposed to be. I will call it one for group one. Once I have that frame created, now group one can click on that little uh, icon here with those two squares and the rectangle and click on that number one. That will zoom you in to that area on your tablet and you can start writing on it and we can zoom it out and create another frame for group number two. Now, group number two can do the same thing. Just go to your uh, icon for frames, click on number two, and you'll be able to see on your screen only that portion of the common whiteboard, and you can start working on there. Now, for the last two groups, even though they are the closest to each other, what I would like to do is to collaborate, because that's really the main reason for that thing altogether. Uh, so, as you can see, these two groups can already work on their own assignments. Whether it's the same problem or different problems, it's awesome for review sessions, for example. And they can see only what they are zoomed into. Like their frame, of course they can use fingers to get out of it, but they are focused on one thing while everybody, or me myself uh, only, can see everybody's work. Moreover, I can actually interfere anytime I want. Actually, not interfere, but help. I remember this semester I had a situation where uh, several students were work several groups of students were working on problems, and they were making mistakes in their calculations. So, I, without saying anything, interfering or anything, I would just write with a different color in the next line of their solution. Oh, there is a mistake right there, or something like that. Point it out. They can fix it without me even saying anything. So I will do the common frame for groups three and four. And the whole idea here with groups three and four, once you get into it, is that you can work on the same problem. For example, I'll give you an it will be a little hard to write with that mouse here, but I will give you an equation to solve. Let's say I will do this color for myself. 2x minus 7 equals 5, whatever. There's a lot of math people in these two groups, so I think you shouldn't have problems solving it. But you can cooperate on that. This is one of those ideas of having single students in different sites cooperating on the same problem. They can use the audio system of IVC connection, where everybody else is muted, to talk to each other. And then also, each of them can write on it and see what everybody else is writing at the same time. So Ted is operating this one. What's your name? Andy. Andy is operating that one. So why don't you cooperate with Ted here? If, where is that other microphone? So why don't you give that one to Ted? I will give this one to Andy. Andy? Did I remember your name correctly? Yeah. yeah. So why don't you just talk to each other and try to go through that problem together? Because that's exactly imitating of what we see in an IBC connection. Should be yeah, negative. Just talk to each other. It should right. be negative seven there, right? No, no, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, so so now That's we need fine. to get That's X fine. by itself. So I divide both sides by two. Okay. Yeah, and someone has to write it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very good. And you can see somebody can write. No, I can show whatever I want on that big screen. What I usually do, actually, is I introduce a concept, I have some definition on the screen, I have a solved example that I go through myself with the help of the students, and then do their own example next. 
So what they see on the big screen is that solved example with the definitions and stuff, and they do everything on their tablets. There is one group working on their, they have their own frame, they, there is another group working on theirs, they have their own frame, and there is a group of single students, possibly in different locations, maybe even four or five of them, that have that common frame, they use the audio system of the IVC connection to communicate, and they use that to cooperate. Okay, thank you for participating in that. So that's the main reason why I started to use those tablets, but of course, over the course of more than a year already, how much time do I have left? 10 minutes? Okay, so over the course of, the, of, of more than a year already, uh, I was able to figure out some other uh, ideas to use those tablets. As I say, one of the things that I did up front was to do an actual grid on the screen uh, up to nine different frames, but with an actual grid, so even if they zoom in and out, because it's very easy to navigate through that, you can use two fingers to scroll down, you can just pinch to zoom in and out. Uh, as you can see, there are other tools like drawing tools and erasing highlighting tools. You can change thickness as well. So it's very easy to operate now that that bug is fixed, that it doesn't take it as an input anymore when you take it out of the screen. And uh, as I say, once it's all done, and uh, sometimes, you know, if there are several groups working on problems, they would, after they are done, they would say something to the whole class explaining what they've done. And then I just copy all of that after some editing because, you know, it's sometimes hard to write on it. Those of you that are actually drawing on it see that it takes some time to get used to it. Uh, so we don't care about little glitches and stuff because I can clear it out before I copy them and post them on the classroom notes. So that's what happens next. So the students take ownership of creating the classroom notes uh, as well in here. But then as I say, uh, that was just the starting point. And what, once again, that whiteboard is endless. If you zoom it out, it will show you s just to a certain point but then when you start filling those spaces out, you can keep zooming out and it will keep on forever. And those uh, student accounts and uh, teachers' accounts are all completely free and fully functional. That's another uh, reason why we chose this one. But going along, we developed other, or we learned about other tools as well. Uh, and this one other tool that I wanted to tell you about is called Learning Catalytics. That's a Pearson product altogether, and uh, for those of us that are in math know very well what my math lab is, and it is a portion of my math lab. Uh, and yeah, as I said, I can show everything or just pieces of it, whatever I want to show or interfere, I can do whatever I need here. Uh, so let me go quickly to those learning catalytics. I'm just logging into my own account because I use my math lab, but all of you that don't use my math lab can create a temporary account if you open in your browser. You'll have to type it in, learning catalytics.com slash demo. Like that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just learning catalytics, one word, dot com slash demo. And then if you go in, oh, it actually took mine. Okay, I'll just open a different browser for that purpose. If there is another one here. There's no Firefox, there Explorer.
So just the matter of typing in first name, last name, email, as I remember, it doesn't even ask you to verify that account, so you can just do whatever you want. Okay, now it works. Uh, so you can do the same thing on yours, and the best thing about learning catalytics is it can be used on any device. So I'm still using those tablets to do it in class so that students already have some kind of device that they can use it for, but it can be used on any device that has a browser and internet connection. Cell phones, tablets, laptops, whatever it is. I used it with my students on different devices this last semester, so I know it works. And once they join, and it's just a matter of creating a session here, so I can create a course or a, add a sample course, really, so I'll just do that here. And I just start my sample lecture. I do start session, that will give me the number. And that number, 96255897, is what you should input right there. So let me take it back here and show you on a big screen. Nine six two five five eight nine seven. And it says, please wait for the next question to become available. And I have full control on it right here. So let me zoom it back to standard zoom. And I can deliver the first question. It's a multiple choice question, as you can see. And now you should be able to see that on your screen already. It just pops out as a question. Now you can click on the answers submit it, and then I will see here what all of you are doing. I can see zero responses, zero correct. I have one student logged in, so I would be expecting four <laughs> at least. And the only one logged in is probably me here, isn't it? Yeah, I can click whatever I want, and it will show up in there. One response, zero correct. Now, this is just an example. In the sample course, there are five questions, all of completely different type, and that includes possibility of actually drawing on the screen with a finger or with a stylus. Uh, full statistics, of course, whatever you want to show your students, there is 18 different types of questions you can ask, including multiple choice, true, false, matching, uh, short answer, long answer, uh, graphing, uh, common graph, uh, lots of other things. I don't even remember all of them. I just remember the ones I'm using, because that's fairly new to me. And then you have full control on what the students see at the moment on their device, which question it is, two minutes, and uh, full statistics are only available when they are logged in through Pearson, so that limits it in a sense. But through that demo, if you don't want to keep record of their responses in class, and I usually use it like that, it's just to see an immediate response and comment on that, that is definitely enough to do it. So you can do that as well. As you can see, we have more already. Uh, three students are logged in, and, and you can see how that works. So if I had more time, if we didn't have those technical difficulties, I would show you those graphing ones, because those are really the most interesting. If you can see a common graph of everybody's inputs and stuff like that, this doesn't have any limit on the number of students, so it can be even used in a 400 students class. 
Actually, there is a possibility of creating a map of your classroom and each student is uh, kind of clicking on when where they sit and everything like that. There is much more into that. But those are just two tools that I wanted to make you aware, especially that first one, because it all started with it, in a sense. The only downside is it requires that the students use some kind of devices, and it's best if they use devices with styluses. So if we don't provide them to them, then there might be a problem. So this is why I use that grant money to buy those tablets and, and start working with them. But hopefully, eventually, it will grow and every student will have something available. Yes? Well, I call them university property, even though I got the grant uh, and they are sent to different uh, campuses every semester, really. I then get them back, uh, update them and everything, and then send it back to the campus. As I say, usually by about fourth week of the semester, because it takes some time to stabilize the roster and everything like that. But that's exactly what happens. Other questions? Yes. So just to summarize, if a student has an iPad and they walk into your class, what would they need to do to be able to use the system? They would have to go create an account. You mean the first one? Yeah, the, the no, this one board. right here, Learning Catalytics. If they were going to use oh, this. Learning Catalytics is different. Uh, in Learning Catalytics, uh, if you want to use that on, on a more formal basis, in a sense, they'd have to have an account through Pearson. And that costs money. But if you just want to use it as in-class experience without keeping the records and everything like that and assigning grades or anything to mm -hmm. it without struggling, then you can always use that demo. And you've seen how that demo works. It's just a matter of inputting whatever information because it doesn't even verify the email addresses or anything. And you can create your uh, educational account the same way. So you can create questions on the fly and make them available to students, or you can prepare them earlier, like the whole session of questions, and deliver them one at a time, however and you so want. So the students would just have to log in every time or just create a, a new account each time? Yeah, but okay. you, you saw how long it takes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how not long it takes. So yeah, but for that real-time board, they create their own account, educational account, which is free and uh, lasts forever. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much for coming and participating. I'm again sorry for not all of these tablets being available, but it took much more time to log in than I expected originally. So I hope that... Well, thank you for showing us how to be flexible as a teacher, <laughs> especially when there's technology issues that happen. Yeah, and please return them to their facilitators. Don't, don't take these home. Thank you very much. Have, have a great rest of the day.